Hey there, camels. Uh, today, I want to continue our, our little series on locals, actually conclude our series on locals. This, will, I think, will be the last video uh, teaching about locals, at least for now. Um, so this is a series about a feature that uh, we at Jane Street are developing in a branch of the OCaml compiler. Um, uh, details are in the description about how to get it. Um, and uh, we've been building up understanding of feature upon feature of this. Today's video isn't really going to introduce any new features exactly, maybe one actually, um, uh, but instead try to do a little tiny bit of practical programming uh, with locals just to sort of get a flavor for how this might go. And we're going to run into a particular problem and, and then try to solve it. Um, so here's here's the, the example. It's all very contrived, but um, the idea here is that we have a table of widgets indexed by a number, and we want to get um, the best prime widget. Um, and so I have a function get best here, which can take a widget list and give me the best widget in the list. But before I can apply get best, I want to look all we'll look up in the table to get all of the widgets corresponding to all of the, the primes that are below 100, which I've just already sort of preloaded in this int list. Um, and just because I don't actually feel like implementing these functions or thinking very hard about what a widget is, I've done a little trick here. If you have a module signature um, uh, like helpers or like this signature here rather, you can create a module that has that signature just with module rec and uh, sort of saying that it equals itself. So this is completely useless. If I ran any function in here, um, I would I would end up with um, with runtime errors. But I'm not going to run the functions. I'm just going to compile them. It'll be fine. Um, so then I have my function best of prime widgets, which gets this this table here, and then it maps over the table. And for every prime under 100, we're going to go through and then look up that element in the table. I'm not going to worry about exceptions getting thrown up. We're just going to assume everything is there. And then that accumulates this list w's, and then I'm going to call get best on w's. So all of this actually works. Um, if I try to build, it builds just fine. And then we get best of prime widgets, takes one of these um, widget int maps, and then produces an actual widget. Everything is fine here. But I realize there's sort of an opportunity for, for improvement here in that this list w's, I don't want that to allocate on the heap, right? Here, this is just being produced by this list.map. And here, it's being consumed by get best. And I don't need the list anymore. I just need that final widget. And so I would really like to be able to say that this here, well, that should be local. But of course, this value escapes its region. And that's because get best is um, is not expecting a local list, but a global list, right? I have the type for get best up here, and if I haven't said that it's local, then that means that it must be global. And so indeed, it escapes its region because there's no promise that this get best function doesn't do something horrible like save the widget list somewhere, allowing it to escape. So I just say, well, we're not going to do anything horrible. So we'll say that this is going to be local. Okay. Oh. This local value escapes its region. This argument cannot be local because this is a tail call. Ah, well, we've seen that problem. We know how to solve that. That's easy. Um, we just write non-tail. Um, and if my best of prime widgets was recursive, I wouldn't really necessarily want to do this non-tail. But here, it just so happens that get best is the last thing I'm doing. I don't really care about the tail call optimization here. Um, OK, so now I put non-tail in. and everything is well. Why is everything well? Oh, well, of course it works because I haven't implemented get best. There's nothing about this that's suspicious. But actually, if I look at this type, it's, it's a little bit funny, right? I'm taking a local widget list and returning a widget, but I'm returning this globally. So where did I get this global widget from? It, it, it wouldn't really work out. So let's take this out and we'll actually implement this, this function for real. So we're just going to say let get best widgets is match widgets with, um, and then we're just going to say the first one is the best one. Um, the details don't matter. And then we need to do something here. So I'm just going to say assert false just to keep us moving forward. OK, so then this get best here um, I've written. And now I want to get rid of this one, because I actually have a real implementation now. And we're going to call my new one. And now I'm expecting some trouble. Yes, once again, this value, this local value escapes its region. And um, to see exactly what's going on here, let's comment out this function so I can get to see what is the type of get best. 
Well, it just takes an alpha list and returns an alpha. There's no local here. So let's fix that by saying that this must be local. And then it returns here a local thing. Well, that makes sense because I've taken something out of this local list, so it too must be local. But now, if I say this, now this local value escapes its region. Cannot return a local value without an explicit local annotation. This is actually um, uh, uh, outdated. That's the word I'm looking for. This is a little outdated. It really should say exclave um, here. And, and what's going on is that this best of prime widgets is trying to return this result. It actually wants to return something global. Um, so maybe I'll make that clear by saying this. I don't really care about its input, but its output is going to be, what is it, a helpers.widget. Um, and then now it just says this value escapes its region, right? Because I'm saying here that I want this to be global. This is not something local to my function. This really is something global um, that is stored in some table. And so now we have a bit of a problem because this get best, it looks like it's going to return a local. But I want this list to be local. I don't want the elements of the list to be local. So, so let's do a slightly better job here and actually write out the type that I want. I want this to be a local alpha list that returns just a plain old alpha. That's really what I want. And then this is going to be function. Oh, and I could just make this all much better with function. Um, but now here, if the list is local, well, then indeed, if I'm trying to take something from the list and return it, then that's a problem. And, and really, the problem I'm running into is that I want to have a local list with global elements. And like it's, it's kind of hard to see how to do that. So it turns out that there is a feature that allows us to do that, and that's something called the global modality. Um, so I'm going to make a little type definition here, type global, or type alpha global equals um, g equal uh, of type alpha, and this is going to be unboxed. I will explain all of this. Okay, let's see. It likes that so far. And uh, let, me, let me actually sort of go ahead and implement the answer, and then I'll come back and explain it. And that's by putting this global here. And then if I say g equals w here, I think this might work. Yes, this works. OK, excellent. Um, although there's another problem that's going to come up in a, in a moment. We'll get back there. OK, what on earth is going on here? So this global type, well, this is just kind of a wrapper, right? It's an alpha global is just an alpha. I've given it a name g. Um, this at at unboxed, if you haven't seen it before, this is not a specific feature within Jane Street. This is just a feature of general OCaml. And it says for this very specific kind of, of record here, we're not going to allocate any memory at runtime, right? If I have a record that has exactly one element, well, then I don't need to sort of allocate any extra memory. And so this unboxed says that at runtime, an alpha and an alpha global are represented the same. So why would I do this? It's to have a place to write this global underscore, and this is called a modality, not a mode, although I don't really want to get into the difference between those two things here. Um, the idea is, is that this G, even if, the, um, even if this record itself is local, the contents in here are going to be global. And it allows us to sort of escape from a local context back into a global one. So here, when I say that this is a local alpha global list, this is a list of global alphas. So the list itself is local, but each element is a global alpha. And so what that means is that here, when I extract out one particular element from my list, you, and also pattern matching against this global G thing, um, then this thing here really can be global. Right? Again, I can't write the word global here, but if I haven't written local on a function type, that means where it's implied global. Um, and so this allows me to extract out the W globally. Um, and so this sort of gives me the, this feature that I want. And But to do that, I really needed this, this sort of extra type definition for global. Um, I said a minute ago that there's something weird that's going to happen here, and that is that the inferred type of best of prime widgets here I see is a widget global int map 
which is probably not the actual int map that I have. Um, and so here, it's, it's a little annoying in that I have to not just unpack the G, but I have to pack the G. So here, if I, I'm going to put G around this to sort of take my the result of this find and essentially protect it. And this says that this thing is going to be global, but the environment that it appears in can be local. Um, and so now um, everything works. The return, or sorry, the argument type to my best of prime widgets is good. There's no mention of global here. My output is global. And yet I said here that my list is local. But all is still not quite well. So this local says that this W doesn't escape. It doesn't actually say that it's allocated on the stack, though. Um, and that's because I'm using a normal list.map. The normal list.map just allocates on the heap. But as we've seen before, anything that's global, we can just call it local, right? We can say, oh, this global thing, well, it's not going to escape. So we're just going to say that it's local, right? And so this can be a little bit misleading and a little bit confusing sometimes um, because it looks like this should be allocated on the stack, even though in practice it won't be. So we have to, we have to write our own little map function. Um, and uh, within sort of the full Jane Street environment, if you're working with base and core and some of our other libraries, you can you can actually access um, uh, uh, functions instead of having to write all of them yourself. But right now, we only sort of have the stdlib. We're not we're not operating in that environment, um, and so I have to write this myself. So what are, what is it going to be? We have let rec map f list equals match list with empty returns empty and x cons x's returns fx cons map fx's. OK, good. And so here we get this map. But again, this isn't quite the map that we want. We want a map that produces a local list. So let's write out the whoops, let's write out the full type that I want. Um, and then I write fun here. OK. Um, so here, I take some function and I take an alpha list input. Um, it turns out that I don't, I don't really care right now whether that's local or not. I just want to make sure that when I'm done, I allocate the list locally. So let's see, does this work? No, not quite. This escapes its region. And that's because I haven't made an exclave here, right? I actually want when this map is operating, oh, and I'm going to want to use that map down here. I'm going to want to allocate in the region of best of prime widgets. And so to do that, I need to say exclave. And so I can say, actually, I can't say exclave there. I can only say exclave in a tail position. So I could say it here. And now this works. So now this map is going to locally allocate this con cell. Um, because it's in one of these exclaves. And then down here, I, I, it is actually local. Um, and in fact, I can leave out this local and it'll still be inferred and because we know that this map is always going to return a local list. So what, what's happened here? Well, we've seen some of the sharper corners of this all. We've seen that if I want to have a local list with global elements, I need this extra type just to wrap things, which I both have to insert into and then pattern match out of. That's kind of annoying. And I've also seen that under my normal map function that I really want to be able to use all the time, this is a slightly different version. This is a, a, a version that just produces a local list because I want this cons to be done locally. So these are some of the little sharp corners. Um, and right now, we're continuing to work on the locals feature. We're hoping to eventually get our way toward mode polymorphism, which should make some of this better. Um, and then maybe a better syntax for sort of doing inline modality so we can just sort of say global without defining this type. Not quite sure we'll do that. We're, we're, we'll see. It's still all a bit of an exploration and an experiment. Um, but I did want to show a little bit of what happens when you try to use this stuff in practice um, because some of these gotchas may come up in, in your own programming. Anyway, thanks for, very much for watching this series. Stay tuned for more fun features uh, from Jane Street to Camel. So long.